The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to trap, entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. See, before long, we're going to have a whole generation of kids that aren't afraid to say, Jesus loves you to somebody. Wouldn't that be cool? And then you all can learn from that? (laughs) Sorry, that's sneaky. We are nearly at the climax of the story. Jesus has entered Jerusalem to fanfare and shouts of... Right? He's gone to the temple courtyards. He's overturned the tables of the money changers who were extorting the people. He's been debating with religious leaders and telling parables to make a few points, not least of which you're wrong or you don't quite understand what God is up to. And things are reaching a boiling point in Matthew's gospel. If we were reading this during Lent, this story we would be thinking how close we were to the cross. That's what's happening in this story. And it's brought together two groups of people that normally would not have anything to do with each other. The Pharisees and their followers and the Herodians, or the people who work with the government over Jerusalem. The Pharisees and the Herodians, the governing body of Jerusalem, partner to trap Jesus with a question. If Jesus answers the people answers the question that the people should not pay tax to Rome, then he's inciting potential violence or instability in the government. If Jesus answers that they should pay taxes, then the crowds following him are likely to disappear, or worse, even oppose him, this one that they thought was coming to unseat the Roman authorities. The coin Jesus holds in his hand has the image, the likeness of Caesar, the Roman emperor, stamped into its face. According to author and theologian David Lowe's, there's more going on here than meets the eye. Lowe's says, as long as, as, as along with that image is engraved the confession of Caesar's divinity, that is, that Caesar is God, which means that any Jew holding the coin is breaking the first two commandments, all of which leads to Jesus' closing line, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And with this one sentence, Jesus does not simply evade their trap or confound their plans, but issues a challenge to his hearers that reverberates even today. When they heard Jesus' response, we are told, the Pharisees' people and the Herodians were amazed and went away. There are many directions that one could go with this text, but I want to focus on the likeness, the image that Jesus refers to in his exchange with the Pharisees, people, and the Herodians. Lewis also suggests a connection to Genesis 1.26. Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Likeness, or as it is in the original Greek language, icon. It's used in the Genesis text and it's used in our reading from Matthew today. Icon. Jesus knows exactly what he's doing. He's calling people back to their roots, to the image in which they were made, God's image and not Caesar's. So what does it mean to you and me that we are made in the icon or the image or likeness of God? What does it mean that our primary identity is the name we are given in our baptism, child of God? And as a result, what does it mean that we are entrusted with the stewardship of all that God has entrusted to us. 
to bear the icon, the likeness or image of who we understand Jesus to be. In our reading from 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers. An example to all believers. What does it look like for us to model Christ's image or icon or likeness in our world these days? Two stories from the news. One, you may have seen, was in the USA Today. Sunshine Elfke's grandma watched as her five-year-old granddaughter emptied her piggy bank onto the living room floor and counted her coins. Jackie Elfke thought her granddaughter was just playing, but when Sunshine put all of her money into a Ziploc bag and then placed it into her backpack, Elfke decided to ask what was going on. The little girl said she was taking the money to school for a friend. I'm going to give it to my friend at school because she doesn't get milk for a snack. Her mom doesn't have any snack money, and I do, she explained. The next morning they drove to school, sunshine with her $30 in coins and bills, and she put that money towards her friend's milk account. A second story, perhaps you've seen this one. We know about the wildfires that are happening in California, right? This story from the Washington Post caught my eye this week. Nine-year-old Jade Smith is one of thousands of residents of Santa Rosa, California, dealing with the aftermath of the wildfires that raged through the region last week. His family lost their house, and along with it, Smith's collection of Major League Baseball paraphernalia, including his baseball card collection, 17 jerseys, 10 hats, and two balls, both balls signed by the Oakland A's, one signed by Ricky Henderson and Bob Melvin, kind of a collector's item. Jade wrote a letter to the Oakland A's and asked them for a new signed ball if it wasn't too much trouble. But he got far more than he bargained for because not only did the Oakland A's respond, but all the Major League Baseball teams across the country jumped on and their fans, and they began sending all kinds of Major League Baseball paraphernalia to Oakland. Then the A's reached out to Jade to share the good news about this bounty and to play a game of catch. The story gets better, recognizing that the gifts he was getting were far more than he ever expected and certainly more than he deserved. And knowing that his friends had lost their homes as well, Jade invited his buddies to join him and he shared all that he had with them. I saw a picture of their smiling faces all crammed into the camera. And they looked happy, if only for a little while, as they were able to forget about the tragedy of losing everything they had. What does it look like to live a life in the image of Jesus? I say it looks like buying milk for a friend at school. Or... Major League Baseball teams and fans showering a kid with memorabilia. Or that same kid sharing everything he had with his friends. Our theme for stewardship, how we tend the gifts, time and talent and treasure given to us by God is living a life of generosity. You may have heard me slip that into a few sermons over the past few weeks. You may have read newsletter articles or seen something in our Thursday e-news about it. The last couple of weeks and today again, we're accepting your ministry opportunities commitment forms. That is the way that you will share your time and talents with this congregation that is Lord of Life Lutheran Church. So that we can move forward in God's mission in the world. In the coming weeks, you'll hear stories from friends and fellow members about what it looks like to them to live a life of generosity. And ultimately, on November 19th, we'll ask members of Lord of Life to make a financial commitment to our shared ministry. We'll ask for that commitment because we believe that the work God has called us to in this place, and because we, are, because we understand that we are created in God's image, invited into that image by modeling Christ for others. Each of us, each of you, is the image of Christ for each other and for this world that we live in. 
the love that you share, the forgiveness that you model, the passion that you show about your faith, well, it may look like a little girl buying milk for her classmate or a boy sharing generously the gifts that he's received. Each of you has a story to tell. Each of you has a story to tell of God who loves you so much that he's willing to go to the cross for you so that your sins may be forgiven. Each of you has a story to tell of the hope that you have found in Jesus Christ. I may not make the news or even a Facebook post, but I believe that all of us have within us the power to live lives of generosity because God has so generously given to us. That's the image of God that I want to live out. The likeness, the icon of who God is. Amen.